This is Bringing the Backups with Eric Elwig. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Here comes the show. I've been doing a thing where I'll interview a comic, like one, just one of my friends, and then a couple days later I'll do this front part of the show. I got to stop doing that because I don't remember what I talked about with Ray. Cause like, so I already have that interview done, and now I'm talking like Ray's about to come on the show. But Ray's already been in my house, sitting across from me, talking about Cleo Lemon. So now I'm like, what do I have? What have I not said about Cleo Lemon in the interview with Ray? I don't really remember. I mean, I don't think we talked about the fact that this dude was missing in action for three years. Because he's when you get these journeyman quarterbacks like Cleo Lemon. They play on like 80 teams. And even when you look them up and you try to do research, like you'll find different pieces of information. Like I remember I f- it said somewhere that I was reading that he was in Berlin in 2002. It's because like he graduates college. He's at Arkansas State, my man Cleo. Goes undrafted in 2001. And, and then, you know, I think I read like, I don't know what it was, like a piece of loosely paper with letters cut out from a magazine saying we've got Cleo in Berlin but apparently he played quarterback overseas multiple times and one of those times he was in Berlin but I don't have any information or stats on it I know that when he really started he was with San Diego Miami is going to be his big thing that we'll chat about but anyway the point of what I was trying to say with that was I have no idea what I've already covered in the podcast so if you hear me say it now and then hear me repeat it later like it's brand new information with Ray, it's because I don't have a very good memory. So I don't remember talking about it, and I'll try not to repeat myself, but it, it, the, the, the format's got to change. i got to have somebody here the whole time. Maybe they're just listening and kind of hanging out, and then I'll like bring them in 15 minutes later. Like That could be what the show looks like. I don't know. Maybe I'll just have like my wife on mic listening. A little bit in the beginning. It's it's who knows. It's the third episode. I'm I'm figuring it out. You know, you guys are here. You get it. You figure these things out as you go. I mean, the the important part is I have to have fun. If I'm not having fun, this fucking podcast is done. You guys get that, right? Can you guys hear Gordon's? Can you can you have your dreams a little louder? <laughs> Liz, can do you think they can hear him doing that? I could put the mic right up to him. Let's let's just see if we can capture this for for the people. All right, everybody, let's let's listen in on Gordon. Oh, he's fucking shy. He you, you should have heard him. He was really our our dog doesn't bark in real life, but then in his dreams, I mean, he's really going at it. Legs are kicking. There's growling and gnarling and. He's licking his lips. I mean, it looks like he's just fantasizing about eating his owners, which I don't. I've said this before. When I die, I think what I want to do is have my body turned into jerky and fed to my dog. Because my dog loves eating. He loves things that smell like me. This seems like easy math. Turn me into a corpse of jerky and feed me slowly to my dog over the course of A couple years. Is this not relatable to you, assholes listening? I don't give a shit. All right, let's talk about Cleo Lemon here a little bit. One in seven as a starter. Right away. Perfect for the podcast. All those come with the Dolphins. We've got one year, 2006. He loses a game at the end of the season that he starts. And then, oh boy, there's the 2007 Dolphins team. The one in 15 team. Cleo Lemon goes... One in six that season as a starter, and that includes, you better believe, the biggest game in Dolphins history. I mean, the Dolphins haven't won the playoffs in the playoffs since 2000, which is somehow not the longest streak in the NFL. I mean, there's team, I mean, I, I don't know. I feel so bad for people in Cleveland and Buffalo, and I don't know where your anger goes at this point, but 20 years in Miami, pretty, pretty bad to not have a win, but... I was thinking, like, what is the, if you haven't won a playoff game, is Cleo Lemon beating the Baltimore Ravens in 2007? Is that the biggest game in this century for the Dolphins? It's 2020. This might be the biggest game of the, of the 2000s. 
my heart goes out to you if that is the case. I mean, it was a great game. I mean, look, it's Greg Camarillo makes the catch at the end of the game in overtime, I believe, sprinting down the field on the pass from Cleo Lemon. I mean, that is the ecstasy of that, of to to have a season that horrible and then come up with a win at the pretty much essentially the very end to keep yourself out of the history books. When I was looking at the highlights of that game, I mean, the Dolphins were obviously horrible that season, but this was like, you know, the Ravens suck too. So they were like, all right, well, this is the one game we have to win if we're not going to go winless. The old undefeated Miami Dolphins came by for that game to wish the team luck. Those guys are douchebags too. Like they went un- they went undefeated when you played three regular season games and there's only two games in the playoffs and they're like running their mouths like they did something crazy. But whatever. They took their undefeated vibes and just sprinkled some magical dolphin dust on Cleo Lemon and the dude pulled it out against the Ravens. Biggest win in the last 20 years of the franchise. I mean, maybe that game where, like, you, you did the hooks and ladders play against the Patriots. You remember that? You know, like, where, like, they, they by the end they just look like kids running around playing soccer where they're all, they're all just following the ball in the same way and one kid breaks away from the pack. I love those. I always think, like, in those plays where it's some miracle touchdown on a kickoff to win the game. The play itself lasts three minutes. There's zeros in the clock for forever. And by the end, the guys are so tired. I'm like, if I could run on the field and start playing at that moment where they're that tired, I would look all right. Like, that would be the way that I would be good in the NFL is I can only come in in the last 10 seconds of miracle plays, and I'm as fast as everybody else. Like, when their legs are gone, where they look like hockey players that have been on a shift too long. They just can't even skate anymore. (laughs) Like That's that's where 34-year-old Eric Helwig comes into the game. And makes his presence known. Cleo Lemon, I mean, in going through his highlights, this dude could ball out. He good. One of the things I liked about him, the first YouTube video that pops up is a video of him playing in Montreal or something towards the end of his career. Montreal, Toronto. No, it's Toronto. The Argonauts. I feel like the Toronto Argonauts is one of the coolest names in sports, it's unfortunate that it's Canadian football, but what are you going to do? They got a cool name. I like that name, Argonauts. I'm a little jealous of it. But it's a clip of him with Toronto doing the, the playoffs voice, the Jim Moore. Playoffs? Playoffs? You want to talk about playoffs? I tell you, Cleo to me is a very likable guy. I think he, I think he, I think he deserved a chance to try to play on another team. It's just so it's just so hard. There's only you know what are you gonna do? There's only thirty two jobs. The dude's undrafted. Nobody's invested in him. You know, he did what he did what he had to do. Journeyman quarterback. Eight touchdowns, seven interceptions in his NFL career. That's our speed here at bringing the backups. That those are the guys we're looking for. Guys, oh, hang on. Gordon's making the noise again. I just heard it. Let me see if I can catch it on mic. Fuck, he's not doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it when I take the microphone away. If you're gonna, if you want to talk, you got to come over and talk. If you're gonna talk, let me just throw the microphone on for you, Liz. Oh my god, is my microphone not on? <laughs> I think it's on. If there's more talking and commotion happening, he like has more active dreams. I think. You think that's I what think, it is? I think the talking seeps into his subconscious. Oh wow! So he super quiet. He really enters like a. A little bit of a fugue state, yeah, and lets things seep into his yeah. subconscious. That when we were watching Succession last night, once we paused it, he wasn't really barking anymore. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll get off the podcast before somebody calls you a cunt. <laughs> That's Liz's concern: is that if she comes on the podcast too much, you assholes are going to call her a cunt. And let, are you coming back to say something? All right, let me put your microphone back on. That's not worth. Okay, so, so the cunt concern is real. Don't call my wife a cunt. And don't now jokingly do it because I've said it either, all right? I've had a weird week here, getting away from our pal Cleo for a second. I found a new uh, uh, mole lady. Dermatologist, that's like <laughs> that's probably the phrase people normally use. But I found a mole lady here because I, when I was in New York, I have a ton of moles. And when I was in New York, I had a guy that I would go to. It was very 
New York. You know, I was just in an alley. <laughs> I would go to this guy, this dermatologist, and I had to deal with him. He would check my body for moles. He'd be like, okay, you have like 13 moles that might be cancerous. Let's get these biopsied or whatever. And then I'd go, what about these other three that I just don't like cosmetically? You know, they're like hanging off my eyelid or something gross. I can't remember what the original cost was, but I, I salesmaned them down to like 75 bucks a mole. And every time I'd go to the dermatologist, he would tell me which ones are actually dangerous. And then he would go, which ones do you just want removed? And he would just ring me up. Because like, if you're going to take one mole off, you, you might as well take four. It's not like it's some big thing for him. So I found this new dermatologist out here. I haven't been to the, I've, we moved out here two years ago. I haven't been to a dermatologist because I have changed my health insurance 35 times. Go see a dermatologist. She looks me over. She's like, you got two moles that got to go. One on my back and then one on on my groin area. I have a, <laughs> I have a mole that needs to go that uh, looks problematic. It might be cancer. Who gets a shit? But whatever. Point of the story, I got to get a mole taken off very close to my penis. And so the lady, you know, this is a new dermatologist, hasn't removed a mole yet. She's going to go with, you know, the groin area first. Fine. I'm laying down. So she just, like, starts doing stuff and doesn't say what she's doing first. Now, there's needles and a hot knife right next to my penis. I'm like, okay, wait, hang on. What are we... Let's talk out loud while we're moving here, Doc. And she's like, okay, well, right now what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm numbing you with this shot. And I was like, okay. Numbs me with the shot. Then she goes to like, she's like, can you feel this? And I guess takes the knife and like touches it. And I could feel it like tugging. It didn't hurt, but I could feel it. So I went like, I'm not sure. When she said, can you feel this? I said, I'm not sure. And she goes, okay. Well, I guess we should double check to make sure you can't feel this and I was like yeah should we you literally have a knife an inch away from my cock yeah let's go ahead and and run it again let's just make sure I can't feel anything yeah please double check and she's like okay no worries about it like she's doing me a solid it's like lady make sure I can't feel this please that is the number one priority takes the dick mole away. It's not a dick. It's it's close to. Close enough to be nervous. Handles the back one and that's it. You know, the problematic ones are gone. But then I'm like, hey, just out of curiosity, you know, what, what do we do about if there's a mole I just don't like cosmetically? And she's like, it's $550. $550 to have a mole removed. Now, look, I'm a salesman. So I have sales skills. So I tell her, I'm like, well, you know, if LeBron James comes in, I guess he can afford to have a couple moles removed. But for me, I'm not going to let $550 go for a mole. Now, what I can do, what I'm budgeted for is about 300 bucks, but I'm not going to wrap my head around 300 bucks for a mole. Here's what I'll do. I'll do $100 a mole, but I'll give you a three mole minimum. I'll get three moles removed every time. It's $300 out of my ledger into yours. That's the deal. And for you, it's like, what's the difference? You take one mole, you take seven. It, it's, it's literally three seconds. So I present that offer to her. She's like, it's $550 a mole. They d- didn't move at all. I got to find a new mole lady. Let me know in the comments. As far as I'm concerned, it's like she got $0 out of me, but I had $300 ready to go, and all it took was three moles. I mean, do you want my money or not? It's just cosmetic. You just throw that shit in the trash. Like, what do you, you don't got to tell anybody you're doing it. You got 300 bucks. I wasn't, I wasn't like, going to slip her ones. Like, I was going to go pay legit up front. You know, I won't advertise that I'm doing it. Although, I guess I am saying it on my podcast. So, I, I guess, fuck me. She's probably right. You got to stick to your prices. You know, I respect her for it. But, uh, you know, I got I to gotta find a new mole lady or mole guy out here that's got a little bit of flex on that mole price. You know, I get it. It's like, it's like negotiating. You come in with a ridiculous offer up front, but then you got to be willing to come down. I mean, does $100 for a mole sound like I'm screwing you? One little thing of whatever, numbing stuff, little slice, it's gone. I thought I, I, don't know, I thought I made her a good deal. My wife and I are uh, thinking about heading home back east where we're from for the holidays. 
just to like, you know, we haven't really seen family since Christmas with the, you know, COVID stuff and all that. We've just been out here in LA kind of quarantining. Thought the drive across the country would be nice. We got to take the dog with us. So that's going to be its own thing, but be cool to see the country. I mean, just driving across the country, we're going to drive through 13 states that Cleo Lemons played quarterback in. That's one thing I can do for the podcast is I can, as we're driving, note the backup quarterbacks on the show that have played in the state that I'm driving through. I'm sure we're going to have a couple of those numbers. There's something about the life of a backup quarterback that I think relates to me being a military kid and moving around every two years when I was a, you know younger, all the way up through high school, really, where these guys, you know, they do the same thing. I mean, listen to this, listen to this list. For Cleo, Green Bay, 2001, probably a training camp, didn't make the team. Baltimore Ravens, 2002. Again, I think I saw Berlin is in there somewhere. It's not showing up on his uh, Wikipedia page. By the way, uh, some of you have commented I pronounce Wikipedia weird. Wikipedia, so now it's Wikipedia, apparently. And he played on the Memphis Explorers. Explorers spelled just with X, Explorers. I love that. This isn't a, well, I don't even know what this is. This is the A2F League. This must be arena football. Yeah, professional arena football team. So Cleo played with them. Then we got the San Diego Chargers, 2003, 2004, 2005. The Dolphins. Yep, Jaguars didn't make that team. Ravens didn't make that team. And the Argonauts for two years. There you go. Take a look. Not bad. What I'm saying is I like the, I like the idea of you travel to a new place every couple years. There, there, there's a part of that life that's very attractive where you don't you don't put down roots. You don't like have to – to me, as a military – I know this is probably wrong think or something, but like putting down roots makes you weak. It makes you dependent on that place. But if you just, you know, don't have a home, you know, you're ready for the apocalypse. That's I, – I, am I broken? I feel like that's a good way to approach life. You never settle anywhere really. Because life necessitates change, and when that time for change comes, you're more ready for it if you've been changing unnecessarily leading up to it. That was a fight, me and my wife, not a fight, just a conversation about, like, just generally, like, if we have kids, oh, we got well, we to decide, are we going to be West Coast or East Coast? Well, she's like, once we have kids, and I was like, once we have kids, what? Like, we'll just move. I'm a fan of, like, even if things are going great for our kid, we just move them in fourth grade and make them make a whole new thing of friends. And she was like, what, just make the kid's life harder for no reason? I was like, yeah, you got to put an obstacle in front of the kid so that they suffer, so they know what suffering is, and they can appreciate the times that they're not suffering. How many female listeners have I lost already in the show? I just feel like, I feel like there's something to be said for constantly living on the move and not having a home. It builds a toughness in you for life that you need. It makes it makes it so that you you can't be tricked into stuff. I'm gonna get tricked. Jeez, I'm watching the vow with my wife right now, and ugh. my mole that got removed is in the spot where they got branded by the Smallville lady. It's just yeah. you got to build up. You got to build up an ability to be alone and not think that your life's meant to be happy. And that's what Cleo did for his six months in Berlin. Again, I don't, I don't know if he was in Berlin. Cleo Lemon, please feel free to write in erichelwoodcomedy at gmail.com. Let me know when and where you've played football and if, in fact, you were in Berlin. The Berlin Thunder, I believe, was the NFL Europe team that you played on. There's no stats. <laughs> it's so weird for NFL Europe. Like, you just literally you can't find them. It's like... The league closed, and they're like, okay, burn the office, destroy the servers, pretend like we were never here. It's like people bought tickets to the games. Why can't? Why isn't there like an NFLEurope.com where I can just see who played and how often? Isn't that weird? If you're going to go through all the trouble to like have stadiums and have uniforms, how do you not have like one guy writing everything down so that it just exists for posterity's sake. Did Cleo play in Berlin or not? Also, is there a backup quarterback with the last name Lime? Because if there was, I really should have done Lemon and Lime. Let's Google that right now. Is there a quarterback? Backup quarterback. Quarterback. 
Backup quarterback line. Google searching right now. Uh, it wrote back, you're an idiot. So I guess not. I'm still... Uh, yeah, the, the mole removal's in a weird spot where, like, if I when I bend, I can feel it. Like, on your back, it doesn't matter. Like, it's you just put a Band-Aid on. This is, like, in the moving spot. The pelvic bone area. It's, it's, it's rough. It's a rough spot. <sighs> I'm not even wor- I'm not even worried about like if it's cancerous or not. Like the the real concern was the process of removing it. It's just it's just unnerving. If you're a doctor listening to this podcast, man, wa- just walk people through what you're doing. Okay, doctor's appointments last week. I kind of set them up all for one week, and it's like when they're taking blood, just be like, tell me when the needle's about to go. Don't why? What's the point of surprising people? Help me out. I feel like I'm getting more nervous of needles as I get older. Either that or I'm just getting more annoyed with doctors. When you're younger, you're like, I trust this doctor. I trust what this doctor's doing. You get a little bit older, you see the doctors fuck up too. You're like, why don't you walk me through your thought process, bro? I've gone through 13 primary care physicians since I moved out to California. Some of them really suck, all right? Like, I, I, you're not all geniuses. Where'd you go to college? How many doctors do I have listening? Right now, on average, these episodes are getting about 100 downloads. I'll just tell you. I'm being honest with you, okay? I don't know if I should tell you that, but you know. I don't know what the percentage of doctors is in the population, but there's got to be at least one doctor that's listened in these three episodes. If you're a doctor, I want you to write in Eric Helwig Comedy at Gmail. And explain to me why some doctors don't just say what they're doing as they're doing it. Is there, there must be, a, maybe they're like, it's a reason, like you, people flex up, like you're going to get nervous. It's like a car accident. The drunk son of a bitch that's driving that doesn't even realize he's in the wrong lane survives, but the, the nervous Nelly in the passenger seat never walks again. Is it like that? <laughs> right in, Doc. Let me know. I want to know if it's bad doctoring or if, or if they're doing an amazing job by not telling me. Get educated on this. I do want to say one thing I want to talk about, quarterbacks that have to travel around. But what about the, the hard part? What about when you have to say goodbye to family, say goodbye to a loved one? How do you get back in contact with them? Well, I've got a little bit here on the show we're going to do now where we explore the feelings of a quarterback when they're on the road. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Bring in the Backups presents Letters Home from the Bench, October 20th, 2014. Kellen Clemens writes, Dearest Abigail, The indications are strong that I will not start this year. Furthermore, I feel impelled to pen you, my dearest, if I never call signals in the National Football League again. I have no lack of confidence in the skills bestowed upon me by God, but the generals of management have given their decree. Tell the children, Johnny, Edwin, Jubal, Orville, Ambrose, Scarlet, Bushrod, Braxton, and Doug that I battled the 53-man roster with every ounce of my being. And Abigail, know my love for you is deep, eternal, and forged forever in the hardships endured in the pursuit of gridiron triumph. A beautiful piece there, and uh, just so you guys know, I actually meant to play that about 15 minutes ago and completely forgot. So now I'm going to play two bits back to back. What a... What, you're getting a little peek inside at how the show gets made. I'm not going to spend days editing this shit anymore. It's just the way it comes out the first time is how it goes. So if you're noticing that this episode isn't as brilliantly paced as previous, it's, it's because I got to cut down on the, the workload here. So yeah, I fucked up. We're going straight into another bit. Welcome back to another edition of On This Day in Backup History. Today we journey back in time to analyze the DC Sniper kidding it's for a backup quarterback after a 1 in 14 campaign for carolina panthers rookie quarterback chris winky he became a backup in 2002 now with free time 
Winky started playing chess with Frankie DeClino, the team janitor. Unfortunately for Winky, he thought chess meant playing checkers really fast and lost 200 straight games to Frankie DeClino. You know, this might be the episode that people stop listening. You know, if the quality is getting worse and you're like, you know what, I gave this motherfucker a chance, I respect that. I can't ask for more than three episodes. But assuming you're still with us, we're going to cut to my man Ray Easter here. He came in to do a little interview with us. We had a great time having him on the show. You can follow him on social media at I am Ray Easter. Please give it up for Ray Easter. I need to know everything. Who and the what and the where I need everything. Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George. I hop in the Porsche five and a horse. This is my favorite thing on his Wikipedia page. Lemon has lived in Jacksonville since 2008. He and his wife had their first daughter since retiring from football. He lives a relatively solitary life raising crawfish and alligators on his 130-acre wetland property. I mean, so that's what he's up to. There's not that many stats on his Wikipedia, so they just no. got to put anything. And you know what else is he played in Europe, but I can't he, even find the team. Did it, he play in Europe? I know he played in Canada. He played in Canada, but in 2002, they said he was on a team in Berlin. Oh, that's right. That's what it said. I, I found like, but like. I the, couldn't, actually couldn't find anything in 2002 because he, yeah, he graduated from Arkansas and then he was, I thought he was just a free agent. Yeah, he was just a, a year. I looked at his stats in college. He had an under 50% completion rate yeah. in college. Yeah. Also, leading passer <laughs> at Arkansas State. Yes, and, yes. So, That's like, hilarious. it's pretty funny. <laughs> it doesn't speak who great. Else, who else was in Arkansas? I don't know, man. Completions? I, I wanted. I meant to Google it, whether or not somebody has beaten his record. I who think knows? they would have said something. Maybe. I don't know, man. Wiki, Wikipedia is... Not super reliable. Not really. You got I, I can say that because from the first episode of this show, I had fans go onto the Wikipedia page of Coy Detmer and change facts about his really? life based on what I said about him in the podcast. That is hilarious. Yeah, you just like make up shit on the. podcast. Uh, I would say stuff the- like he's in. Like one of the things I said was he's an eagle for life, and then somebody went onto the Wikipedia and, and just he, changed his career he, accomplishment. Eagle. It just says eagle, Eagles. the number four life. That's hel- it's that still is up. hilarious. It's, so, they're, they're never going to change it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's weird. It's like uh, this is a different friend. Me, me and uh, my friend Ross, we were obsessed with an eagle named Trent Cold. We would go on Wikipedia and just edit. His, like I think at one point we were watching him. We're like, this dude is like, he's like eating people. He's like a cannibal. And then we would just go go and make that part of just his bio that he Trent was Cole, can't yeah cannibal. that he was like found out to be a cannibal at some point or it's that he hilarious. would obviously he would feast on quarterbacks after games <laughs> and like they would figure out that it was one of us and then the other one would go we like edit it from different people's computers so it that kept so coming they, back they onto were his page so pissed off whoever was in charge of Eagle <laughs> Wikipedia <laughs> monitoring that's somebody's job one guy it's not <laughs> one guy no <laughs> yeah, it's not one guy. But it's but no, I, yeah, yeah, one guy for every. <laughs> I think it's like you just get a topic, and then yeah. it's your job to you just have to get like certified. It's like, like becoming that. a professor. Yeah, you kind of is. I mean, you do have to be a professor or be very knowledgeable in something. But that's kind of suck for the guys that are just on Eagles pages, <laughs> just <laughs> changing what assholes are. Yeah, man. Yeah, you know. At some point, somebody's got to come clean up your mess, and so that's kind of what we were doing on Wikipedia but for a while. I mean, if a calling card of this show becomes people listen to an episode, hear me say some something I kind of just made up, and then that becomes a lie on his page. I would love to do that with Cleo Lemon. Let's, just, dude, yeah. we, just, ca- because there's so many blank <laughs> spots in his career where you're just like, where was could, he for three years? You could, could fill it in. 2002, he, was, uh, he had a lemonade stand. In, Ber- in Berlin. He, that's do, what he, <laughs> he does have a charity called Lemonade. Did you know that? <laughs> that is a so real thing. A- 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 I- yeah, D- it's yeah, Lemon Aid. Aid. Yeah. yeah. He, and I think yeah. he started a Lemon Aid charity with his wife. Is It's just him going to people's houses, helping with regular housework. Yeah, He's like, yeah. hey, what, what do you need? Uh, dusting? Or what? You, you pick up some stuff. He's just like putting I'm down for floorboards. Aid. This is the Lemon Aid. <laughs> He seems like he I know I know he's a coach now. The last stop in his career Jaguars was, was the Jaguars and then I guess he just hung out. 
Really? He's still in Jacksonville. He's still in Jacksonville. He coaches for Jacksonville State. See, I felt sorry for him at, at first because mm-hmm. I feel bad for anybody who has to be forced to live in Florida for any reason. Is that bad? Is that bad? All but right. you, <laughs> <laughs> I've lived like everywhere in the country except Florida. Okay, I've been there. It's you know, well, tell us. I mean, just hot. <laughs> you know, a lot of. I know I'm very light skinned, and any time I go to a place that's like majority Hispanic. Like yeah. in Miami, and they kind of speak Cuban to you, and they get kind of pissed off that you don't speak Cuban. Or they just think you're they Cuban? Get, they get so mad when they realize I'm not Cuban. I've heard light-skinned people say that before, where depending on where you are in the country, you become ethnically ambiguous. Out here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, out here, I'm Mexican. I'm actually Mexican, and I don't. It doesn't read. Are you really? Yeah. It does not read. No. no I would have guessed, like, Irish. Yeah. Well, my name's... Friedrich Carl Helwig the third. So I don't sound Helwig. Very Mexican. Yeah. Helwig's German, yeah. but I'm as much German as I am Mexican. Wow. On what side? My mom's. Oh. And if you look at photos of my mom or even my brother who looks more like my mom, like they look Mexican. Uh, and then, and you, then, then you look at gotcha. and my sisters, yeah, we look like mm. ah. Germans. So it just looks like a mixed family. Like I mean, technically guys, I guess technically it is a Technically mixed family, it is. But, but I mean you guys came together later. That's what it looks like. Yes. Yeah. Although, also in real life, we there was a terrible divorce. Well, I didn't want to get into that. No, let's get into it. Okay. (laughs) No, let's talk about it. All right. Well, this is your therapy session. Speaking of therapy, didn't you tell me that you started going? Yeah. How's that working out? Fucking awesome. First time ever? Yes. Mm. Yes. 31. Now you're, like, cured. All better. All better? Yeah, yeah. Seeing the light. (laughs) I'm enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's it really is for me. I started going when I was like 27. So, you know. I waited until I was depressed enough where I had to like crawl out of bed like the chick from the ring, like out Man. of a well. Like I just couldn't go another day <laughs> like the way it was. Yeah, yeah. And then like since then I've been like on and off. Like I'll go for six months and I'll stop. Okay. If I go for longer than a year to therapy, I start to feel like it's just never going to end. Okay. I'm like, I need to, like, test the solvency of what I've learned. I'll be yeah, like, yeah. I'm gonna go, I get when, that. when we go home, I'm staying with my dad for two months. So we're going to see if therapy worked well, Okay. for the last year. Okay. I see where the trigger is. Don't let him knock the shit over because he, he, his thing is to try to go through the wires. You're the mom. Mm-hmm. You know, I made the decision to let the dog wander, and I think it was a mistake. Uh, yeah, he's uh... a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he. Yeah. yeah, now he just w- thinks he can put his head in my lap. There you go. There you like, go it's, like it's not twenty pounds. Talk to me about Big your. Guy. I I think I'm remembering this right from our conversations. You were in a military family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dad's and, army. Dad, yeah. So yeah. me too. You ended up in D.C. Right for high school. Yeah, yeah, age, yeah. right. Uh, Northern Virginia. So you're like D.C. teams except for the Eagles. Yes, because we, so right before we moved to the D.C. area, we were in Philly, and we were only there for like a year, but that was like, I loved Philly. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely did. Uh, Then when I got to the, like, D.C. area, I tried to be Skins fan. Like, we we would go to a couple games, uh, went to a couple training camps. They're terrible. Well, it's not even that because the Eagles were terrible too. Yeah, that's a good point. But, <laughs> but it's the fans. Oh, really? Yeah, they're so annoying. The fans. The, well, they're the Washington team now, but the fans. Yeah, you can't skin, say. Yeah, it. you can't because that's not PC. Also, by the way, our our boy Cleo was on the Arkansas State Indians. Ooh. Now the Red Wolves. Okay. So he's been he's been through what what Skins fans have been he through has. as well. Anyway, well, sorry. Yeah, just every year, just, uh, I don't know. I mean, you probably know a couple. My mom's family's from that area. So all my uncles, my mom, my grandfather, yeah. like when we'd go home for family stuff and the Eagles and the Redskins were playing, I would lock myself in a room Wow, away from my family. Because it, like, it. it was like me and my dad. My dad brainwashed me and my little brother to be Eagles fans. We were the only ones like that in our family. Wow. Yeah. Just all skin fans. All of them. Oh. All of them. Uh, yeah. They were the worst. Yeah. But it's also like they, I, they were just like – they were my family. So they, And also this was a time when the Redskins used to – oops. 
the Washington football team. Yes. Used to beat the Eagles pretty regularly. This is like early 90s. Oh, uh, yeah. So, like, we'd get together for the game. There's like 30 people in the room. Me and my brother are the only ones wearing Eagle stuff, and the Eagles are just getting creamed twice a year. I mean, I hated going there to watch games. Of course. And I, everybody would get invited, and I'd be like, just let me go watch upstairs by myself. Uh, it's tough being the only Eagles fan. One of the things I've noticed during quarantine with the NFL season is they have the cheering in the stadiums, the fake okay. crowd noise. Honestly, have not been keeping up this year. I mean, but, yeah, I, you know. Well, regardless, when there are Eagles games on, the fake crowd doesn't boo, and it's <laughs> annoying. It's because like, that's e- not real. Yeah, it's, that's yeah, not it's real. just it so takes me out of it to be like <laughs> I'm waiting to hear people screaming "fuck you," right? I've seen them get crushed this season, and the crowds yeah, are like, all cheering. Yeah, it's yeah, just like, it like doesn't make sense. At least tailor the boos to a little bit. The just city be you're in, like Philly, you have to boo. Exactly, you have to boo. You have to boo. And in Seattle, they should put more noise because they're used to doing yes. that as well. Like yes. you should make it like <laughs> true to the experience of going to, to of that, that place. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe they should do it in a bubble, like the NBA. That wouldn't work. What the NBA is doing is perfect for for them their size. Yeah, and ho- I, hockey's doing it too, and I think they've had like success. But I don't keep up with hockey. But yeah, I mean it's a sport. Is it on ice? And hilariously, all the te- the best teams play it's in not Florida. On grass. <laughs> it's not on grass. <laughs> it's, you know, okay. the, the 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 rub in hockey is that it should be a sport with all Canadian teams because that's where it's from. Yeah, and a Canadian team hasn't won the Stanley in Cup a, in like thirty years. That's what I. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. And the Tampa Bay Lightning have won like shit. three. Yeah, because all the players are from. Yeah, but they all go to American teams though. Yeah, so like yeah. there'll be a player on the. Phoenix Coyotes named like Martin Lefleur. Exactly. (laughs) You know nothing about Phoenix. Yeah, and like the Maple Leafs suck. Yeah. Yeah, so it's frustrating for them. It's got to be. It's like like if if we put like an American team in the CFL and then we sucked, (laughs) that would be awful. It would be bad. (laughs) Or just like they're talking about putting a team in London. Like the, like the Jaguars. Okay. Like, if the Jaguars went to London and won three. That would be fine. <laughs> you think so? If if they went there. If it, they won three Super Bowls in a row, you'd be like, why the fuck do we have this London team? Yeah. Uh, well, Uh-oh. Disagreement. No, I would. That would kind of be cool, actually. All right. I don't know. Cleo Lemon played a game in London. Did he? Yes, he did. One game. Yeah, for the Dolphins. Any, they played a London. It was like the oh, they, the uh, Dolphins and the Bills did like that London game. One of those like scr- – aren't they like scrimmages or something? No, it's like a real game, like a 2007 regular season game, but they went to London. Okay. And they lost. Of course. Yeah. He was not great. Oh, this is 07. This is 07. This yeah, is his season. This is uh, – This was his <laughs> – I mean, they went what? One in like 15? They went was it? 15. Yeah. Well, he has the but greatest he, game. He has the greatest yes. moment of, like, anybody on the he, show so far. He saved their season. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> he saved their season. So for the YouTube version of this show, like, I, I put every pass or touchdown that the backup has thrown. Like, I compiled that. It's just the one. Stats. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to replay That's why the I one. try to find, like, shittier backups. So yeah. it's like there's way less stuff to compile. Yeah. But just today I was going through Cleo Lemon's games. The guy was not bad. Like, he, when you watch him play, he's got athleticism. He can escape. He can scramble. He's got a decent arm. He can, he yeah. Can, he can move. Yeah, and he was playing he's, on, like, a crappy team. Like, yeah. I bet he would have done well if he had been given, like, more Yeah, if he, was on a, if he was on a team. I'm trying to think of a, a team with, like, a good QB. Like, if he was in New England. Sure. He would have been fine. Yes. So much of it is just like where you where you end up. Where you end up, like who your coordinators are. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's random. Yeah. It's just like life. Yeah. It's like everybody's like, Oh, you fucking you're where you are because of how you were. It's like yeah, that's true. Yeah. But it's also it's sometimes it's just fucking dumb. Some you luck. just get Cleo had no chance. You know, I what no I no chance. What I I love the the theme of the podcast is that. Uh, yeah. Whoever's on the show, they had no chance. Yeah, yeah. Even if they had every chance, they had no chance. Yeah. Because it's fun that way to just be like, everybody could be Joe Namath or Joe Namath, Joe Montana. Or Joe Namath. Or Joe Namath, <laughs> who's not that good. 
Got, got a ring. Got a ring. Got a ring. Trent Dilfer got a ring. Wow. Joe Namath threw more interceptions and touchdowns. He's like the worst quarterback in the Hall of Fame. Is he real? I don't know. I don't know. He's the worst. He's the worst. The reason he's in there is because he guaranteed the Jets would win the Super Bowl, which at the time meant something. Yeah. That's when there was like one reporter for the NFL and they interviewed <laughs> two people for five seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like now it's like 30 people guarantee they'll win every – it doesn't mean shit. No, it doesn't. But yeah, at the time it was like, how could you say that? <laughs> Before the games even happened? I mean, dumb luck. Dumb luck. Dumb luck. Yeah. How's uh, how's everything else going for you in quarantine? Therapy. So, good. <laughs> that's all I live for now. It's work and therapy. Oh, my God. Well, I guess that's don't good. Do any, I know. Don't do any Zoom shows. Well, we did one. I mean, I don't, I don't do them unless asked. I find myself doing, like, prop bits on my Zoom shows. Like, I'll have a joke where I, like, mention a microphone and then I'll pull my podcast microphone into frame oh, or something. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I start <laughs> feeling like Carrot Top and think about killing myself. <laughs> and then that's <laughs> the end of that. Oh, man. I bet Carrot Top is killing it right now, though. He's got to be. On the, on the Zoom shows, even? You just go to, like, I mean, CarrotTop.com, everybody, if you want to check it out. Yeah. You can see his... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop his, this podcast now. And go, and go stop to, listening. <laughs> and go to Carrot Top's website, please. <laughs> He doesn't need the money, dude. That guy has done such a good job of taking a really shitty art and turning it into. I mean, yeah. And he's yeah, he, great at that shitty art, oh, by the way. I want to, like, in case, of Car- course. in case we got Carrot Top listening, oh, friend of the yeah. show, we'd love to, ha- we'd <laughs> love love to, to have, have him. Think about a QB you want, a backup. A backup. This is to Carrot Top. Oh, yeah. Who would he want? Who would see it? He's a he's a redhead. Does that are there any redheads? Well, where is he from? I want to say Vegas. Is he from Vegas? No. You think he'd be a Raiders fan? Well, even if he was from Vegas, he wouldn't be a new Raiders fan because they've only be been vi- there for yeah. three months. Yeah, that does that still doesn't sound right to me. No, the first game awesome. of the the season, their game came out and just said LV at the top, and it took me like fifteen seconds to remember. It was like fucking uh, oh. Vegas. And the Oakland fans, I, f- I was reading some article that they were going to stick with their team. I was like, don't do that. Yeah. You pussies. Just yeah. like they left you. St. Louis moved on. Yeah, move on. They, yeah. they got an XFL They're, team. Yeah. The Blues won the <laughs> Stanley Cup. Just like another there sport. You go. Like something else. Yeah, it's like when somebody breaks up with you and you're like, let's still be friends. It's like when right, somebody like breaks no. up with me, I'm like, get the <laughs> fuck out of my life. <laughs> Everything's done. Delete Facebook photos. You're done. Where's Carrot the- top. From Florida. Look at that. Yeah. So All he, comes back full circle. So he probably, if he was picking a backup, he'd probably want like. Maybe Cleo Lemon. Not Cleo Lemon. He, or what are the other Florida teams? Like a Buccaneer? I forgot. I keep forgetting about the Bucks, Dude, and the Bucks, they if, if we do backups from the, the era of a lot of these backups, we're going to yeah. get some creamsicle wearing backups for the Bucks. It, yeah, they got, those, they got those old orange uniforms. Oh, you're talking about way back in the day. They wore those things into the 90s. Yeah, yeah. Warren, oh, yeah. Warren Sapp was wearing. <clears throat> yeah. Creamsicle. Oh, yeah. The orange. One. Yeah, I remember those. I talk about the creamsicle jerseys for the Bucks every episode of the podcast. <laughs> do, you, much. do you? I really you like miss them. them. I I miss them a lot. Do you? I like the new. I like the new. Ones. I like ugly colors. I get that. I kind of do like ugly colors. Like, I like the browns. Love the browns. Yeah. And I like the dolphins, too. Super teal and orange. I, if I had my way, all the teams would go back to what they were wearing in 1989. Oh, yeah. You know what jerseys I really like were the Oilers. I literally talked about this on the last podcast. But, yeah. yes, the Oilers jerseys are. I loved them. I keep wanting the Texans to take back and become the Houston Oilers, but they can't. That will, that will be nice. Oh, that's right. They did go to Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're not they're not giving it up. No, 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 no. They they need their football out there. Well, they no, 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 no. They won't give up the the mascot. Like the t- oh, the, the Titans t- yeah, yeah, were yeah. the Oilers. And right. They moved. No, they're not going to give up. You know, the Titans. No, they're not going to. Yeah, give the that Titans up. won't let the Texans wear their old no, shit. That sucks. You know what it is? They're billionaires. The owners. They view it as their team. 
and it, they, they're like, what do the Tennessee Titans have to do with Houston? Like, they don't exactly. care that there were, like, decades of fans in Houston with that powder blue colors with the little oil spigot on it. Yeah. Like, they don't give a shit. Like, they don't view it as Houston's team. It's their team. Such a great retro. It's the best. I'm trying to think of what other. I'll give you some that I like. Yeah. Yeah, let me think about it, though. I, I said that like I had it ready to go. <laughs> right, yeah. I, really, I was I, like, okay, fire I really, off. I really didn't. <laughs> Give me three. <laughs> rapid fire. One, yeah, two, three. I, th- Here we I go. thought you had like five lined up. I'll go old Broncos. I like the, oh, the, the, the or- bright blue okay. and the I like bright the, orange. I love the orange shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the, they wore those jerseys right up until the end of Elway. Yes. And then they, as soon as they changed, yeah, they won Super Bowls. So they're never. No, they're not going back. And by the way, that's the reason that I don't think the Eagles are ever going back to Kelly Green. No. Because they, they won the Super Bowl in Midnight Green. So I think that's what I think that's just what we got. Though as far as the Eagles, I kinda do like the Midnight Green a little better than the Really? Get the I fuck do. out of my I, house. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> cutting it short. You like the Midnight Green? I do. Do you always like it? Or did you like it after they won the Super like has it grown on you? No, I've always liked it. So the second they changed it, yeah. you were like better. To be honest, I wasn't really an Eagles fan when they had the old, okay, older jerseys. I was just kind of into football, just in general. You came to the Eagles later in life. Yes, I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like two thousand. All right. Well, that makes sense. Twenty years. Twenty years. Eagles You're celebrating your twenty year anniversary yeah. this year. Mm-hmm. That's very nice. Are you going to do anything nice By for the team? By not watching the NFL. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to watch. By not watching the NFL at all. I just got – we weren't – I wasn't watching anything up until a couple weeks ago, and then we just bought Hulu TV. So now I have sports back. But I was just watching highlights of stuff. That's what I was – That's. I mean, that's pretty much what I'm at now. I'm it's just. It's probably better for your life to just do that. Yeah, because just I'm focused on – like my other therapy shit. You just you're really, really into. Th- are, how yeah. often are you going to therapy? It's just once a week. So you go for once a week for an hour. Yeah, and then for the other six days, you're like preparing. I'm like, I need but- to fucking go back. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how long? So how long have you been going? Like two months. Two months. Okay, yeah. so you you really are in the holy shit. Yes. Yeah. 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 So you're like you're gonna like discover you're gay on this podcast. I, if we keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great, man. I mean, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's an intense time to be yeah. going like right in the beginning. So you're like at that point where all the bad relationships you've had in your life, you're like, oh wait, it's it was me. me. Yeah, that moment yeah. is so <laughs> the killers yeah. in the house for all of your shit. Yeah, is yeah. such a crazy revelation. I mean, I definitely knew that. It kind of I've been like reading like a bunch of. Like books before therapy, so I've been doing like a lot of self therapy before that. Mm-hmm. So it kind of did soften the blow once I was actually in the sessions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, no, I've been needing a go since high school, late twenties, early thirties. Good time to hop in, right? And try to you know move the ship a little bit better for the yeah, for the yeah. back nine. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Yes, you want pets now? Yes, just shake right <laughs> in the middle of the sentence. Yeah, he has no respect for the recording Not timeline. at all. Just does not. He he wants a podcast about starting QBs. <laughs> well, he's like That's everybody else that I told about this fucking podcast when I was starting it. They're like, why don't you just do Tom Brady? I'm like, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> the, whole per- the whole point is that of there's course. a million fucking things about of him. Of course. Also, you could do a whole Tom Brady podcast. Yes. You really could. I don't know if there is any, uh, but you could do a whole podcast just around Brady. There, there probably is one, but I bet the Boston accents get fucking annoying after, like, episode God, three. I could, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would be. <laughs> I would definitely listen to anything else. I think the whole point of this is, like, when you YouTube Cleo Lemon, like, the first hit is, like, a nine-second clip of him 11 years ago. Going oh. playoffs like before, oh, yeah. he, like <laughs> like with like the Montreal yeah, Canadians. Yeah, yeah. It's like the Canadian. Team. There's nothing out there. There's for nothing him. for. So him. I want to be like the number one hit 
for like for the thousand people a month who look up a specific guy gotcha, like randomly. Gotcha. You know? That yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I feel like it's I, I feel like the podcast will like it'll grow over time because more people will just find it because everybody featured on it is like a random search. Right. That makes sense. Th- there will never be more than five people a day Googling Cleo Lemon. Of uh, no. But there will be one person every day that Googles it. I think yesterday it was just you and me. It was totally that. Yeah. It was just us Googling, Googling Cleo <laughs> for sure. Dude, he's such a – I liked him more after watching him because, again, like I watched a bunch of his like post-game talks or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, he seems, seems like, like a good leader. Yeah. He, like, he puts it on himself. Yeah. He's like good with the media. He's, yeah. he's not a yeah, fuck yeah. up. It seems like he's a guy that earned his career in the NFL, and it would have been nice to see him play Which, more. Yeah. yeah, and you just feel bad for those guys. You just got to sit there. On your couch, you mean? On his, on the bench. Yeah, well, they also work during the week, but sure. you're right. They, they get Sundays off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the, yeah. That's you the, get the, weirdest, off. That's the weirdest <laughs> part. You get, it's like a, it really is just like a normal yeah, job. you get like 40 hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> And the nice part about being hey, third string is clock like, in. All right. Yeah, you like sometimes you get call. It's like a doctor. Like you're on call on the weekend. Yeah, you yeah, might yeah. have to go yeah. in. You're definitely on call. But you know, assuming there's not a school shooting, you're you're off for the weekend. <laughs> well, that's a bit drastic. Yeah, it's a little. Or Andy Dalton yeah. breaks a finger. Whatever. That makes more sense. Yeah, that's probably a, a nicer way to put it. At some point, I'm going to say something on this podcast to get me in trouble. I don't know when. Yeah, but I mean, I f- maybe that's it. What I just said, probably. Yeah, that might be it. I mean, you know, we have we did say Redskin to like uh, five times each. <laughs> I feel like there's a, there's got to be a uh, grace period for that. Yeah, it no, can't be yeah, like yeah, yeah. immediately no, no, you're yeah. done. No, there. I, yeah. Do people even say it? Because I, I, you know, people. I don't even hear people talking about the team. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, f- I know there was, like, people in D.C. that will try to only say the Washington football team, like, going back, like, 10 years ago. You know, I read an article that I thought was interesting about the Redskins name thing where they were like, and by the way, Cleveland Indians, Florida Seminoles. And then somebody from the Florida Seminoles was like, they're actually super proactive with the Seminole community in Florida. And, like, the Seminole tribe has verified and been like, no, no, we love that this is the name. They do like internship programs. Oh. They even go. They even say like at Florida State, it's not a mascot. Like that is our team. So it's like this whole community they've built there. And I'm okay. like, oh, that makes it like really yeah. cool. Like, and Redskins was that in the 1930s or whatever. Like there were Native Americans yeah. on the team. But what it was is that the team just never made it a thing after that. Like it was just a. What's, yeah. what's for sure is like they didn't do the thing to earn it where you could defend it. They'll never change the Seminoles. I hope not. I mean, if they're doing all that work and stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah, which, the you know, Washington team never did. They weren't doing shit. So. Well, a bunch of other stuff came out about them, oh, too. Oh, the uh, harassment, all the. I, I thought it was going to be worse. Not that that stuff's good, but when they were like, here comes the article. I was yeah. like, I was like, I thought they I thought they like they were like building it up like they killed people and shit. Like, <laughs> like I thought it was gonna be like there's bodies buried at FedEx Field. Yeah, yeah. But and it was like they run their organization like a fucking Hooters. I mean, maybe they should switch out that team for a London team. Oh, um, you know, half the listeners are my family. Uh, okay. So this so conversation has infuriated the bring in the backups. Well, you know what? Fan base. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> <laughs> they. Uh, I've made my peace with. Those fans. And you also root for all the other teams that they root for yeah. in D.C. Yeah, 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 I do. So it's like, man, fuck the Washington football team. But also, you want to go to a Wizards game? <laughs> yeah. Let's go first. Wizards. <laughs> Why don't they become the football Wizards? The football you can have two teams in D.C. Two called wizards? the Wizards. And I'd, the say, I'd say you just make all of the teams <laughs> the Wizards. And then you don't have to buy new shit. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> like, it's good. You buy one shirt, you've bought them all. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> or you could name all your team after goofy childlike shit. Go- oh yeah, you could like, have, like the, the wizards and then the the warlocks, <laughs> <laughs> the, the magicians. <laughs> yeah, everything on the Harry sorcerers. Potter, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just... wizards makes me mad. There's no, there's no reason for it. No, 
Absolutely not. And I don't like that they made it not the bullets. Like, I think they should go back to the bullets. I would love that. I mean, I get the reasoning for changing the bullets, especially at the time. Yeah, because there was a bunch of shootings. Yeah. Which to me is like the best reason to be called the bullets. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, that's That's what you're doing. (laughs) That's our mascot. (laughs) That's like, yeah. That's why we're the bullets. (laughs) I mean, yeah, but Wizards makes, that's like the opposite it's for kids. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember there was a, they like did a vote in the Washington Post for changing from the bullets. And the other names were, they like made them dumb so that people would choose wizards. It was really? like the Washington Mud Hens. Or Ugh. like, yeah, like they gave them like, they gave people horrible options and they were like, okay, I guess wizards out of this. That was, and yeah. The, uh, f- yeah, it was like the Washington shit buckets. <laughs> just, <laughs> everything just to make the wizards sound like, yeah. Yeah, that's the, the Washington t- Nazis. All right, I guess we'll go with wizards. I guess we'll go wizards. That's, yeah. I, I think it's just like a thing, like that, around that time is when the Raptors came around. They, they were just like naming oh, shit. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, that was an awful name. They thought kids the would, rat- if we name it something childlike, yeah. kids would Because Jurassic Park something. came out yeah. around that time. That's like, yeah, just naming your team off of like a popular movie. I know. From the 90s. <laughs> like the Terminators. That's a better name. Actually, that would, if they that were the Toronto the Terminators, that would I not would sound like too bad. <laughs> I'd like to go ahead and formally request that they do that. They should. They could also be the Toronto Schindler's List because Ooh. that also came out in 93. <laughs> so if you're just going for like the top grossing movies of that year. Of that, yeah. That's got a nice ring to it. The Toronto Schindler's List. <laughs> the Toronto <laughs> Schindler's List. Oh, my goodness. Well, look, Ray, we've been talking for uh, a good amount of time here. I'd yeah. say we can uh, we can bid the audience adieu. Well, do you, you want know. to uh, do you want to plug anything? Your therapy sessions? Yeah, if uh, <laughs> I almost said her my therapist's name. Uh, <laughs> yeah, shout out to us. Uh, I've heard pe- I've heard people plug their therapist before really? on podcasts, but you okay. don't have to do that if you don't hey, feel comfortable. Hey, shout out to uh, Sloan Fabricus. That's a real name. Sloan Fabricus. Yes. Talk about Sloan Harry Potter names. Fabricus. Sloan Fabricus. It's not, yeah, it sounds like like she's in costume design. Yeah, yeah, or something. Well, that's but she's great though. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. The best. All right. Yeah, is that, exactly. Are you really going to just plug your th- – you could also plug your did. Instagram or something. Oh, or. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, I am Ray Easter. All that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Sloan Fabricus. Sloan yeah, she, Fabricus yeah. is great yeah, yeah. and will really get you to deal with yeah, yeah. childhood Follow issues. her. Follow right. Gordon. Well, look, Ray, it was great having you on the show, man. Dude, thanks and, for uh, having me. Of course, man. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the show. To hear more Bring in the Backups or help us grow, please subscribe on iTunes or Apple Podcasts and leave a written five-star review. Or subscribe and hit the notification bell on YouTube. For info on the show or how to see Eric live, visit erichelwig.com to hop on the newsletter.